All right, yo, what is going on, everybody? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build the best PC for your money or just get the best pre-built for your money. So the first few parts of the video, I'm going to be talking about the PC building phase. And if you want to skip to the pre-built part, just go skip around the video and find where I start talking about the pre-builds. I'll try to have time stop for that in the description if you want. But we're going to be talking about how to build the best PC for your money, depending on what budget and what the best one is for latency. So for matters of latency and just FPS, we're going to be completely avoiding Ryzen unless we're reaching a really low budget. So first things first, we're going to start off with the most insane budget, basically the top end parts. And this is actually pretty simple. You don't really need to do anything PC part picker. You just need to follow what I do. So PC part picker is just going to show you all the parts from different stores and it'll pick out the store that's the cheapest. So as you can see, I already have sort of a PC part picker already here, but we're going to be making a new one so i'm gonna click start new and then we're we'll gonna be choosing cpu first so for cpu obviously we're going for the best of the best so 13900k or the 13900ks so what the k means in both of them means there's integrated graphics and it's unlocked for overclocking the ks however is clocked a little bit higher and just has more overclocking potential if you want to go for that cpu the 13900k is still pretty good basically just a lower version than the 13900ks 13900ks you're basically just paying more just for the slightly faster clock speeds so in that case obviously we're just going for the best of the best in this build specifically right here so we're going to be picking the 1300 ks or actually we're not because it's this much so that's a little bit insane we're going to be picking the 1300 k and kf usually is a little bit cheaper than 1300 k or basically any cpu that's a k so 1300 kf is going to be cheaper 13600 kf if it's not cheaper don't get it there's no point only get the kf if it's significantly cheaper if it's only like a couple of dollars cheaper cheaper then don't get it but anyways 1300k and cpu cooler this is really important for these 13th gen cpus they pull out a lot of power and they get hot very fast and very quickly and they get pretty hot so all of these are garbage that you see right here don't get air coolers they're garbage for intel intel is going to run way hotter than ryzen and all the other cpus it's just going to run hot so you want to be getting an all-in-one water cooler or making a custom loop obviously most of you are going to get an all-in-one water cooler so to do that we're going to be getting the deep cool lt720 so this one is the best one for your money and just because it has way better circulation than the other coolers so we're going to be picking this it's only about 140 dollars and if you want an even bigger all-in-one water cooler there is the arctic liquid freezer 420 millimeter which basically means three this obviously depends on your case and if it fits it or not so in our case we're just going to leave it on this one and then the motherboard we're going to be picking the itx motherboard from msi so the reason we're going to be picking the itx is just because we could push the memory clock speed way higher on this motherboard compared to other motherboards with four memory slots and this is just due to the daisy chain layout on four slot motherboards however if you want a full-size motherboard for whatever reason then you might have to spend a little bit more to reach the significant speed of ddr5 on that motherboard but for most of you this motherboard right here from msi d790 edge wi-fi is plenty enough don't get gigabyte don't get asrock and basically Basically, avoid those at all costs and if you're gonna get a 13th gen cpu get a z790 don't cheap out and go for a z690 or anything lower however if the z690 is a pretty good deal like once in a lifetime deal then go for it but just keep in mind that you are gonna have to update the bios probably and it doesn't have compatibility for the next generation of cpus from intel z790 however does have support for 14th gen once it comes out so gigabyte avoid that asrock avoid that everything else it depends on the model so not all of them are going to be good for in general use you just want to get the msi edge z790 you can get the itx or the full size you're going to be able to get 7200 megahertz max stable on the on the atx with the four slots on the itx you're going to be able to get 7800 megahertz even more probably so it depends on that and if you want for whatever reason ddr4 you could get that but for ddr4 you can honestly just get a different motherboard that's way cheaper as well you get the z790 tom Mahawk Wi-Fi DDR4, which is way cheaper. But in our case, we're going to be getting the best of the best. So 
the Z790 Edge Wi-Fi. It's only $340. So we're going to be picking that. Now for memory, this is obviously DDR5, so it's going to be way higher. So we're going to be going for the 7800 megahertz just because I know for a fact this works on this motherboard and I don't want to risk any other memory stick. So we're going to be picking the G-Skill Trident Z. I'm going to be picking the black ones and then add that up. And then storage. Storage, you don't really need to complicate this. Just get an M.2 NVMe. So a 980 Pro, 2 terabyte is perfectly fine. And basically, uh, the less the terabyte, the less quality basically of the SSD. So 2 terabyte is going to perform better than 1 terabyte. 1 terabyte is going to perform better than 500 gigabytes. So yeah, that's it for SSDs. You don't need a hard drive really in 2023. If you want a secondary hard drive for whatever reason, I guess you can get it. But 2 terabyte terabyte drive is perfectly fine. The video card, uh, this is really important. In this build, we're going full out. We're going to go for the 4090, obviously. And for the 4090, usually the ASUS RG Strix Gaming OC is the best one out of all of these. So we're going to be picking that. And then a case. So a case, you just want to make sure it fits the CPU cooler that we're going to get, which is the 360 millimeter. So for me, in my case, we're going to be choosing the Lian Li Cool 3 without any RGB. If you want RGB for whatever reason, you can have it, but most of you probably don't want that for just a clean build. So the Lian Cool 3, as you can see, and this should fit the cooler. For the 420 millimeter cooler, I don't know if it's going to fit it. You'd have to research that. But if you're going from 420 millimeter, PC part picker will try to filter out some of the cases that can't fit it but obviously do further research just in case before buying so power supply we're going all out in this build so we're going to go for the hx 1200 platinum so we're going to be picking that and then choose operating system ignore this and everything else under here you can just ignore you don't need to buy windows you can install windows later from a usb stick and then activate it later you don't need to buy windows for 200 dollars. there's no point of doing that all in all this pc is about to be four thousand dollars and we've basically maxed out all the things that we can so if if you're going for a slightly cheaper PC, literally all you have to do is just change the GPU in this build right here. So for example, I could change the 4090 from a 4090 to like a 3060 or even the new 4060s. And then depending on that, obviously, again, for these parts, I'd highly recommend to stay away from Gigabyte, ASRock, the NZXT branding is basically just ASRock, so avoid that as well. And yeah, and the PNY, please avoid PNY. Basically, any of the the, like weird branding on these GPUs you want to avoid just because they're going to perform slightly worse than the bigger companies like Asus, MSI. Not to say that Asus or MSI are always the best. Sometimes they're not always the best, but yeah. And again, avoid Founders Edition. Founders Edition is garbage. It has way worse temperatures. On the 4090, I'm not sure because it's just a big fat heat sink, but just ha always has worse temperatures, so don't go for that. So yeah, as I said earlier, all you have to do is just change the GPU and the price will just plummet down. So say for example, example you're going for just a decent build you can play either valorant or fortnite you're not going to play any of the gpu intensive games that a lot of people will be playing like call of duty or any of that so 4070 is probably good so you just pick any 4070 obviously do some further research on which 4070 is the best and yeah as you can see we dropped down from four thousand dollars to twenty five hundred dollars which is pretty good for getting a pc that'll last you literally a couple of years this pc is really fast it's going to get you a lot of frames so just take this into account you don't want to go for ryzen you don't want to go for any of the bonky like brandings of power supplies coolers motherboards and gpus so for power supplies i just want to dive into power supplies real quickly just in really quickly in depth so power supplies you want to get some that are rated pretty decent honestly i'd avoid every other power supply except the rmx literally just look out for an rmx 850 RMX 1000. You don't need 1200. If you're going to go for a 4090, obviously get 1200. But if you're going for something less, 1000 is perfectly fine. Even 850 is probably fine as well. Yeah, that's it for power supply. Obviously, there's stuff like Seasonic, which Seasonic, I've heard, is pretty good. You could use that if you want. Obviously, get the gold plus 50, 850. But RMX is trusted by literally everybody. And I've helped people build PCs, and they've always picked RMX, and we've always had no issues with them. So, with like all these lists of power supplies like as you can see there's endless like kinds of power supplies you don't know which ones are good and the rating of power supplies is it doesn't really mean much you can have like a thermal take and it'll run way worse than any of the other power supplies even though it's like rated the same efficiency so make sure that you get the rmx or seasonic or just a reputable brand from for power supplies obviously do your research i'm not going to get into which one is good evj is also pretty decent but do your research on which ones are decent there's some psu tier list around 
around the internet. You can look at those or you can just look at reviews online and see which ones are the best. But for most of you, stick with the RMX and you should be perfectly fine. Now let's dive into the case, like really specific onto the case. So cases, you want to get a mesh front and the less glass, the better, basically, just because there's more airflow going inside the case. And case fans are not really needed unless you really ha have like really bad airflow. So most of these high-end cases should come with fans, like the Lee and Lee 3 comes with fans, three in the front and I think one in the back, and that's all, pretty much all you need. And the three in the front, you're going to obviously take out and put the 360 millimeter on one water cooler. In. And let's step back here and then go back to the water coolers real quickly. And water cooler, I'm going to be posting right now a picture of what you should look for in a water cooler layout. So you want to look for the best layout, obviously having the radiator at the top and the tubes moving from the right of the CPU is way better. So I'm going to be just posting a picture of the best layouts and the ranking of them. Obviously, some of them are really bad. So if you have the tubes going up and you have your radiator mounted in the front of the case, that's really bad. You don't want to do that. You want it from the bottom just because of gravity. So what are some other good CPU coolers? If you want to go all out and you want to get a bigger case, you can go for the Arctic Liquid Freezer 420, which so you want to go for that if you want. But most of you are going to be perfectly fine with the LT720. And now just a quick pointer for 13th gen CPUs. You want to get a contact plate and it's just a really cheap part. I don't know how much it costs, but it's super cheap. You can just get it off of Amazon. I'll just link it in the description of what the, the contact plate looks like. And this is just to make sure that you don't have any issues with the contacting the CPU cooler with the CPU. So make sure to buy that. I'll link it in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it for building the best PC. Obviously, you could change the motherboard to the ones that I've recommended. And if you want like pre-made PC builds, then go to my discord and i have a build pc build channel in there and that you can look through the builds now that's pretty much it for pc part picker we're going to move on to pre-builds so pre-builds there's not really it's not really great options there's some decent options but they're not super super great so the fun being the nzxt bld so the nzxt bld i preferably like this just because it's way easier to pick parts and it's just you can send the parts with a link so obviously you're going to be choosing intel and then just maxing out the budget we don't care about the budget right now we're going to be changing everything that they pre-pick out for us just because the ones they have pre-picked like look at this this isn't this isn't good at all so you want to get a case with the flow name obviously in it so we're going to get the h7 flow just because we want the bigger radiator and obviously these coolers aren't great but it's your only option if you can if you can't build a pc then the x73 just max it out with the 360 millimeter and you might get a need to get a contact plate for these these pcs just because they're also 13th gen and the problem is on those cpus as well so motherboards honestly you don't really have much of a choice here so Obviously, we're going to be just be picking out the Asus. ASRock, avoid this at all costs. Yeah, just avoid ASRock. And the Z790P is, I wouldn't say it's pretty good. I'd aim for the A. But yeah, we're going for DDR5 for this build. So DDR5, we're going to max it out. They don't really have any of the decent DDR5 that are like above 6,000 megahertz. So max that out, get the G skills. And then power supplies, their selection right now is very limited. So honestly, just stick to whatever they pick. So 850 is obviously fine for this build and gpu it depends the gpu of course but for gpu avoid radeon if you're going to be encoding with your gpu aka you want to use the encoder on your gpu to stream to record to clip don't ever go for radeon their encoder is way behind nvidia's and yeah if you're gonna play like dx11 games on dx12 so games like call of duty modern warfare amd performs fine probably even better sometimes than nvidia but obviously the encoding issues are still present nvidia is going to perform way better in other titles though however so obviously just look for around obviously we're going to be getting this the asus just because pny i want to avoid this as much as possible same thing with the gigabyte but if you have no choice then you can get you can go for those this is a pre-boot so you're not going to get the best selections all the times so you want to just make the most out of it so you could probably upgrade it later on if you want so i'm going to be choosing the 4080 and keep that selected and storage uh, as i mentioned earlier with the pc builds basically more storage on the ssd is better just because it's binned better basically just like a cpu whenever you pay for the 1300 ks it's been better than the 1300k the ssd whenever it's higher storage it's been better so 970 evo you can have that if you want but i'm 
I'm going to be picking the one terabyte 980 Pro and then just adding that just so we don't run out of space. And then you can just delete the 978 Evo Plus and then you can only have this one SSD. So if you want a second hard drive, you don't really need it. But if you want it, I guess you can add it if you want. But it's just you don't really need it. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this. And software, you can save $30 just by picking Windows 11 Home. This doesn't really matter. The difference between Home and Pro is pretty much nothing. But yeah, in a standard service, you could pick the faster one which they build it faster and it costs 90 more dollars but all in all this pc right here is about three thousand two hundred dollars obviously if you build it you're getting way better value than this and you're spending less and you're getting better parts so that's the issue with these pre-builds you do have to pay a premium to get them built and they just mark up their prices for certain parts so that's nzxt you want to look for a company that has this sort of feature where you could pick specific parts and i'm not going to cover up i'm not going to cover every single company that does this but just look for similar parts and then look at my PC build recommendations in my Discord and try to mimic some of those parts that I'm picking. Try to research and do stuff like that. And again, just avoid ASRock, avoid Gigabyte, avoid PNY, avoid like those weird brands that you don't really hear of. You hear more of S MSI, ASUS. Not saying they're always better, but most of the time they are. And ASRock and Gigabyte, it's just been super buggy in my case with working with clients. So don't get them. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you want more stuff like this, subscribe, comment if this helps you, like this video for the YouTube algorithm, and follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and yep, see ya.